fuck you up. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll, I'll seek I'll seek my I'll seek my cousin on you. Oh yeah. <laughs> my wife and him are distantly related. I started doing genealogy and, and it's fascinating to find out all these people in your family tree. Yeah. And she has a very unique maiden name, Holtzclaw, and I started you know, branching off into her tree. She was related to James Thaddeus or Thaddeus James, one of the two oh, old clubs, a brigadier general down in Georgia. And he's related to you too. So. Yeah. She ain't gonna, she ain't gonna whoop me today because she's sick and she's still lying in bed. Yeah. All right, we're gonna go ahead and get started. Everybody got one? Fabulous. Would you be my coal porter if somebody comes by and make sure they get one of them? Do that Normally I have my guitar, but arthritis is killing me, so. My name is Scott Sturdivant. I will be your uh, chaplain for the day. Open up your little pamphlet, and you can keep these, please, if you get the opportunity and you and you want to hear more. Uh, I have my Singing CO Facebook page, and then you can find me on uh, YouTube at Singing CO Ministries. Singing CO means correctional officer because by trade I am a correctional officer. I am. The, de the definition of stupid because I retired from one jail only to go work at another one, so that makes me dumber than a bag of hammers. So. <laughs> we will get started then. Since the Savior found me, since the Savior found me, pardoned all my sins, I have had the hope, oh, I have had the joy and living hope within. Gone is all the shame and sorrows of the past. They're underneath the precious blood of Christ at last. I'm saved, saved, saved. I'm happy on the way. I'm saved, saved, saved. I love him more each day. I'm saved, saved, saved. I know he's mine each hour. He saves and keeps and sanctifies me by his power. Since the Savior found me, all to him I owe. For his precious blood has washed me white as snow. Now no condemnation, happy as can be. I'm glad that Jesus justifies and sets me free. I'm saved, saved, saved. I'm happy on my way. Saved, saved, saved. I love him more each day. I'm saved, saved, saved. I know he's mine each hour. He saves and keeps and sanctifies me by his power. Since the Savior found me, I have perfect rest. Living in the realms of joy and happiness. Leaning on my Savior, looking for that day. When he shall come to catch his waiting bride away. I'm saved, saved, saved. I'm happy on the way. Saved, saved, saved. I love him more each day. I'm saved, saved, saved. I know he's mine each hour. He saves and keeps and sanctifies me by his power. I'm saved, saved, saved. I'm happy on the way. Saved, 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 I love him more each day. I'm saved, 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 I know he's mine each hour. He saves and keeps and sanctifies me by his power. Amen, amen, amen. Going to do the next song, How Firm a Foundation. A little trivia, which general from the Confederate Army. There you go. Robert E. Lee's favorite hymn. Sang it at his funeral, as a matter of fact. We got some more folks coming. We'll give them a second. I did start just to sco, Shirley. Well, good morning, sir. How was the ride? It was eventful. No problem. We made it. Lots of chariots in the way on the, on the way down, was there? Two weeks ago, I was preaching in Amish country, and it was kind of funny because I stopped at a gas station, and I was filling up the truck, and there's some people from New Jersey, and they were saying, look at that Amish guy. He's driving a Ford. <laughs> Good morning. Sorry, we started a tad early. 
for a tad later. You that's know that. that's <laughs> all right. All right, we're going to go with how firm a foundation. The next hymn on here, again, this was General Lee's favorite hymn. Why is it so green? <laughs> how firm a foundation, O oh saints of the Lord, is laid for your faith in his excellent word. What more can he say than to you? Who unto the Savior for refuge hath fled in every condition, in sickness, in health, in poverty's veil, or abounding in wealth, at home and abroad, on the land, on the sea, the Lord, the Almighty. Strength there shall be. Fear not, I am with you. Oh, be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will still give you aid. I'll strengthen you, help you, and cause you to stand upheld by my righteous omnipotent hand. When through the deep waters I call you to go, the rivers of sorrow shall not overflow. For I will be with you, your troubles to bless, and sanctify to you your deepest distress. Throughout all their lifetime my people shall prove my sovereign, eternal, unchangeable love. And then when gray hair shall their temples adorn, like lambs they shall still on my shoulders be born. Amen. That's some good singing right there. By golly, that ought to make a Methodist want to shout and a Baptist want to dance. Woo! <laughs> Sorry, I told I, I already gave them the spiel. I ain't going to be like everybody else. I hope that's all right. I'm a little bit touched anyway. Going to do the last hymn, which is on the back page, Amazing Grace. John Newton wrote this song. Anybody not know who John Newton is? Everybody knows who John Newton is, the whole story? He was a slave trader, by his own admission, a vile, disgusting, dirty, rotten sinner. And this man was even held captive by an African princess as a slave himself. On the way back from England, the ship started taking on water, and he did the only thing he knew how to do, which was cry out to the Lord. And the ship did not sink. And it took him a while, but he eventually became a minister of the gospel and wrote tons of, uh, of hymns but he wrote the greatest song ever penned by mankind, and that's Amazing Grace. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but
like I told you, 1 Peter 4 and 11, if any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which God giveth, that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. So like I said, I don't do everything just like everybody else. I do it my own way. I'm almost like, what's his name, Frank Sinatra. I did it my way. But it's always God's way. Amen. Amen. So we're going to go to the book of Matthew today, chapter 24. The book of Matthew contains the most complete copies of some of Jesus' sermons from his earthly ministry. The two most notable are the Sermon on the Mount and the Mount of Olive, Olivet Dis Discourse. I can't speak today. The latter is where Jesus taught his disciples about the signs of the end of the age. Jesus had just finished speaking to a crowd of people where he decried the sins of the Pharisees and the scribes. He also laments over rebellion of Jerusalem and hinted at impending destruction. The disciples tried to engage him about the temple and he began to discuss the end times. And that's what we're going to try and talk about today. In this chapter, we have a prophetical discourse, a prediction of things to come. Christ here foretells the going forth of deceivers. It begins with a caution. Take heed that no one deceives you. So we're going to the book of Matthew, chapter 24. We're going to start in verse 3. Now as he, Jesus, sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us when these things be, and what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age. And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceives you. Now think about that. Take heed that no one deceives you. How easy in this day and time is it, easy, is it to be deceived? If you don't know the facts, can you be deceived? If all you do is listen to the crowd, are you going to be deceived? Yes, sure you are. For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. Are we hearing of wars and rumors of wars? Amen. We are, are we not? See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginnings of sorrow. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you, and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will be offended, will betray one another, and will hate one another. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many, and because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. But he who endures to the end shall be saved, and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. Heavenly Father, we invite you here today. Father God, hide this, your servant, and let only your words, your wisdom, your knowledge, your love and mercy be known. And if there be one here today that does not know you as Lord and Savior, let this be the appointed time. We just ask you to come and, and, and be with us as we listen to your word. In the blessed name of Christ, everyone said. Amen. Amen. Again, I'm not going to do this like everybody else does. I try and keep a period, but if I don't, I'm just going to preach Bible to you. Is that all right? Yeah, all right. You all right, brother? Yes, sir. Oh, you're holding your hand up? I like to see that. Amen. I like it when young people are in church. I like it when young people are active. Because it takes worship. It takes being as a child to worship Christ. Amen. Amen. The deceiver wants to distract you from the truth today. The deceiver wants to convince you that you do not need Christ. Anybody know who Aleister Crowley was? A vowed Satanist. To do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Well, I got news for you. One person I heard one time said, God is not saying, let's make a deal. Remember old Monty Hall? <laughs> make a deal. He said, here is the deal. Amen? Satan has no problem with someone being a good person. A good person is kind, right? We want to be kind. Everybody should be kind. A good person is tolerant. We want to accept everything, right? A good person is accepting of other points of view. I love the little coexist bumper stickers, right? You got the little uh, Star of David and whatever else is on there. 
I got news for you. There's only one way to heaven today, and I'm here to proclaim it to you, and that's through the shed blood of Christ Jesus. You have to accept him as Lord and Savior, be washed in his blood, and, and believe that he is God. And that is it. It's simple, but it's so hard for some people. A good person wants to get along, uh, get along to go along, right? Don't want to have any issues. Everybody, I want you all to like me. Got news for you. Everybody ain't going to like you. Somebody's going to find a fence with you. A good person thinks that they are fine just the way they are. I'm good. I don't need Jesus. I'm fine. Everything's great. All the good people go to heaven. I got news for you. The Bible is very clear. Narrow is the way to salvation, and few find it. Wide is the gate of destruction, and many go in that gate. Amen? Amen. A good person does not need Christ. A good person does not believe in absolutes. I got news for you. The Bible is full of absolutes. God is who he says he is. God's word is absolute. God tells you what he want, the way he wants you to live in his word. Well, it was just written by men. Yeah, it was, but it was divinely inspired by God. And I'm going to trust in his word rather than trust in some politician in Washington who can't tell me the truth anyway. Half of them can't even tell you what a woman is. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> Matthew 19 and 7. And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, Keep the commandments. So nobody is good. The word is clear. There is no eternal life without following Jesus Christ. And being good ain't good enough. Talked about wars and rumors of wars. Diseases, natural disasters. These are the beginnings of sorrow. False messiahs, wars, earthquakes, famines, and other disasters will be part of the cycle of destruction that will occur while the world awaits the return of the Lord. They will increase just like birth pains, but are not necessarily the specific harbingers of, or herald of the return. We're going to have all these things, but it's not the end yet. Amen? God is still waiting for whoever that last person is to accept him as Lord and Savior. And I don't know when that's going to be. I got into discussion. Again, I'm sorry I'm not keeping this period. I got into discussion with the dentist a couple weeks ago. And I've always heard people say, well, we've heard about this for so long. It never happens. La, 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 la. I actually heard somehow we got talking about it. And I, he said, well, you should be good in a couple years. And I'm like, I don't even know if we're going to be here in a couple years. <laughs> well, what do you mean? I said, the Lord could come back. Oh, I've heard that forever. I'm like, so we got into a discussion. I said, well, I got news for you, brother. He says, I'm going to write that down. You said we will not be here. I said, no, 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 no. I said, we may not be here. Nobody knows the time or day. But if I'm right and you're wrong, you're going to be a little upset. Amen. <laughs> and I like, to, I like to do things a little different, but I'm being serious as a heart attack. If you are not serving Jesus Christ today, then you have a problem. You are not going to heaven. You can worship that tree. You can worship that porta potty You can worship that cannon over there. And I, I said, those guys let me pull a landing on that cannon yesterday. Woo! I'm telling you, no bigger thrill. But if you are not serving Christ today, you are not going to make heaven your home. That is the fact. And everybody that says, wow, well, we're just going along. Those, those Christians are wacky. I'd rather be a wacky Christian than if somebody's sliding on a grease pole to hell. Amen? Amen. <laughs> no one person can predict the war, what war, disease, or event may set off events that will trigger the return of the Lord. But concerning that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, nor the Son, but the Father only. And that's Matthew 24, 36. Many will be offended. Do we live in the land of the terminally offended today, or what? Yeah. I, I teach at the uh, police academy. I teach you basic correctional officers. Been teaching now for 20 some years, and have be teaching cultural diversity. I kind of chuckle every time. <laughs> Nobody tells you what cultural diversity is, so you have to make it up as you go along. And last year, I, I I played a couple uh, videos from the Civil War reenacting. Just, you know, this is my culture. I, I'm a reenactor. And I got the comment was, 
we do not need a right wing rebel rousing person to teach us about cultural diversity. And I'm like, yeah. Oh. <laughs> All I know with the love of my heart is that if God can touch me, and I'm going to tell you, I don't know why here lately he's been blessing me when things looking really ugly, and all of a sudden, boom, a blessing, and all of a sudden, boom, another blessing. I have been preaching now continuously for the last couple weeks. I haven't. We've been, by the end of July, we're probably going to travel about 3,400 miles ministering the gospel. That has never happened before. I got a message yesterday. Hey, we need you to preach here. God is blessing me. Me, stupid me. You look up the word stupid in the dictionary, you're going to see me. Who am I? That God should bless me. That God should put me in a position where I can preach his gospel. But if he can touch this fat, chunky tuna boy, he can bless you. He can use you. And when you look in the Bible, he doesn't use the perfect people, does he? I was in the housing unit one time. This inmate was in there for murder. Crying. Oh, I said, what's wrong with you? Oh, I'm going to hell. I murdered my wife. I'm like, okay. I said, do you think Moses made it to heaven? Oh, yeah. You think David made it to heaven? Oh, yeah. I said, Moses murdered the Egyptian, didn't he? David sent Uriah to the hottest point of the battle and murdered him so he could cover up the sin of having a baby with his wife, didn't he? Oh, yeah. So you could go to heaven, can't you? Well, oh, I never knew that. I was talking to another inmate, and this is just recently. Guy coming in teaching them Bible study. Now, if you're going to teach Bible study, should you know what's in the Word? Yeah. You should study to show thyself approved, right? That's what the Word says. This guy is telling these inmates, you, there is no heaven, there is no hell. You just have to be a good person. I got news for you. I've read that book a, a, a couple hundred times, and I clearly see where people are going to be burning in torment, where the worm dieth not. The thirst is never quenched. Amen? We got people that are claiming to be Christians, that are claiming to be pastors, standing in the pulpit, telling you it's all right. Now, I'm going to get deep here. Telling you it's all right. You do whatever you want. If you want to be a homosexual, you go ahead. If you, you want to wear women's clothes, you go on ahead. If you want to go in the women's bathroom, go ahead. If you want to just, like, blow off church and go to the beach and say, you go ahead. I'm telling you that Jesus, and I'm sorry I'm preaching truth to you, Jesus Christ is real, and you need to follow this word and be in this word, because if you're not, you're going to lose out. I'm telling you right now. Amen? My mother was dying of Hodgkin's disease. She was so weak, and I remember the, the, the pastor preaching her funeral. She was so weak. She had both her legs amputated. She had some issues. They've amputated both her legs. And you know what she said? <laughs> what else are they going to do to me? I want that kind of faith. I get a splinter, and it's the end of the world. <laughs> and she was so weak that she was sitting on that back pew, and when she would go to hold her hand up, she'd have to take one hand to lift the other one up because she was so weak. That's the kind of faith that I want. I want God to touch me. I don't necessarily need blessings. I don't need money, and money's good, amen? amen. And he's blessed me here the last couple of weeks, months, I'm telling you. But I just want to know that I am saved. And does that mean I'm going to make everything right? Does that mean I'm going to make the proper decisions? Does that mean I'm going to be able to keep my mouth from uttering something completely stupid? No. But what does the Bible say? We have an advocate with the Father. And that's Jesus Christ sitting on the right hand of the Father, making intercession for whosoever will. It does not give me license to sin, and I am not telling you it gives us license to sin. But if we do make a bad choice, I don't say mistake because that's something you make on your math homework. If we make a bad choice, make a bad decision, as long as we humbly come before God and seek his forgiveness, it is under the blood. Amen? Am I making sense here today? I'm just here to tell you that God has blessed me and God will bless you. And I don't want anybody to leave here today unless Christ is your Savior. Because we do not know what we have left. I saw last night, West Virginia State Trooper got shot, the one on the call. Killed him. 35 years old, I think he was. We do not know what's going to happen five minutes from now. 
Don't count on tomorrow because tomorrow may not be here. Now, do I sit around and say, well, today's might be the day I die? No, I don't dwell on the fact, but I do think about it sometimes. I may not be here. In 1990, the inmates escaped. They were going to slit my throat. Believe it or not, I can be a bit of a jerk sometimes. I know none of you believe that. But, you know, my mother had just died. I had some things going on. I was a little bit of a butt face. And the inmates didn't like me. And when they planned to escape, they were going to kill me and the other guy that was working on my shift. Only by the grace of God, the night they decided to do it, I was not there. If I had been, I'd be dead. God saved me from that. And when you know somebody was going to slit your throat because they hated you that bad, it will make you change the way you do business. Amen? I'm just telling you, God has had his hand on my life. Even when I didn't realize it was God, he's had my hand, his hand on my life. He's had his hand on your life, and he's just waiting. He gave us all free will. So if you uh, don't want to follow God, you know, not, no thanks, God. There's nothing he can do about it. He gave you free will. All he can do is sit there with his hand stretched out, that beautiful nail-scarred hand. But he gave us free will, so we can obey Christ, we don't, we, we don't have to obey it. We can read our Bible, we don't have to read our Bible. We can go to church, we don't have to go to church. We can accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, or we can't. But there's a price to pay for that free will, amen? And if you're not serving Christ, the day you close your eyes and you wake up in eternity, you're going to hear one of two things. Enter in now, good and faithful servant, or depart from me, I never knew you. And I can't imagine anything worse than depart from me, I never knew you, and be tormented in hell. And hell is real, I don't care what anybody says, there is a heaven to gain and a hell to shine. I used to be a Gideon before I became a, before I had my ministry. I was passing out Bibles at the Frederick County Fair. We had an adult Bible and a children's Bible, and this young kid, probably about, from about her age, come up. I said, son, you want a Bible? And he goes to take that Bible out of my hand, and his father was, and I'm not exaggerating, his father grabbed him. You don't want none of that, son. Jerked that kid away from that Bible, and they walked down, and the kid kind of glanced over me like, oh, sorry. If that child never accepts Christ, he's bound for hell. If that father never accepted Christ, and that son never accepted Christ, then when that father gets to the end of his life, whenever that may be, and he goes to hell, not only is he going to hear through all eternity, you don't need none of that, son, but he's going to hear his son screaming at him through all eternity. You kept me from the one thing that could save me. You told me I didn't need that, and now I'm in hell with you. And I don't mean to get ugly, but that's what's going to happen. Amen? We need Jesus today. And this ain't a, I'm going to scare you into heaven thing, because that's not going to work. God gave us the free will. But at some point, that little bell needs to ring. Just look at this place. Look at all these beautiful trees and the grass and the green. I can see God in everything. And think about when Jesus came, and I believe it's in Matthew, Matthew and Mark 1, they come up to the fig tree. Jesus is hungry. He goes to the fig tree, right? Big, beautiful, like these trees here. Beautiful, bushy, full of leaves, right? There are no figs on that tree. Nothing that can sustain life. So your life today, are you like these trees here? They're beautiful, they're thriving, they look healthy. But can you sustain your life from that? Is that going to give anybody else anything to help them get through to the other side? That's the way our lives need to be. We need to be a fig tree loaded with figs. We need the fruit of the Spirit so that when others need our help, we can grasp them by the hand and lead them through to the other side. Amen? And that's the way we should all live. And it's not easy and it's not always convenient either. There are people that I don't like. There are people that don't like me. But I have to love them in spite of what I might feel. Because we are living in a world that's lost and dying who can't make up their mind, who have no idea. And we, we looked in the scripture. And again, we'll go back to the scripture. What did it say? Many will be offended, betray one another, hate one another. Are we living there now? Can we have a conversation? Can you have differing, of, differing opinions without somebody screaming at you, wanting to beat you down? Can you walk down the street anymore? I don't know about you. I walk into a, a store. 
I walked in the store last night in downtown Williamsburg, and I thought, well, huh, am I around MS-13? I mean, all these teenagers around, I, I got a little nervous. Where are we at? Where do we fit in? I need Jesus, and I'm going to tell the world about Jesus, whether they like it or not. Amen? But I'm here to tell you, if you're not serving Christ today, today is the day of salvation. Coming in for a close. I'm going to give you just five more minutes. Raise your hand. Five more minutes. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty. 20. <laughs> and we talk about being offended. May 22, 1856. Senator Charles Sumner. Ever heard of Senator Charles Sumner? From Massachusetts to address the Senate on an issue of whether Kansas should be admitted to the Union as a slave state or a free state. He characterized Senator Stephen Douglas to his face as a noisome, squat, and nameless animal, not a proper model for an American senator. He went after Andrew Butler, who was not present at the time, and he said of Mr. Butler, he's seeking a mistress who, though ugly to others, is always lovely to him, though polluted in the sight of the world, is chaste in his sight. I mean, added Sumner, the harlot of slavery. And what did... Uh, Mr. Brooks did. They took the cane to him and beat him. So it wasn't in just this day and age. Back then, they couldn't talk either. They couldn't talk. And people don't want to talk about the Civil War. Tear, tear the statues down. Tear, take the names off the buildings. The Civil War today is still right in our face. We are still fighting that war. I hate to say it. I thought we had actually come to somewhere where we were all pretty good and everything. But here lately, I mean, how many sakes, when they take the 54th Massachusetts statue and, and write racist on it, the people don't even know who the heck they're talking about. They pulled down PGT Beauregard's statue in New Orleans. Do they not know that he was founding schools for, for the former slaves so they could read and write? General Jackson had a Bible study, was teaching slaves to read the Bible, which was against the law. They were even threatening him with charges, but he never stopped. And two of those people that were going to that Bible study got saved, had a child. That child became a minister in Roanoke, Virginia, and in the church is a stained glass window with a scene, a camp scene, a river flowing through it, and the words, let us rest, or let us cross over the river and we'll rest beneath the shade of the tree. It doesn't matter some of the stupid stuff that we argue about. All that matters is where will you spend eternity? And are you actively seeking to make sure that everybody you know has the opportunity to accept Christ? You can't make them do it. You can't will them to do it. God's not going to force it on anybody. But I want to be able to say, yes, Lord, I did all I could do for your kingdom. Amen? Amen. Now I'm going to leave it on this note. Revelation 3, I know thy works, that thou art neither hot nor cold. I would, I would that thou wert hot or cold. So because thou art lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I will spew thee out of your mouth, out of my mouth. I do not want to be lukewarm in this day and age. And if they call me a religious night, go ahead and call me a religious night. Amen? Amen. And I know, I'm getting, I, I know I'm being kind of ugly and serious today, but I'm just telling you from the bottom of my heart. Today is the day of salvation. If you're not saved, today is the day you need to get saved. God has an appointed time, and I have a feeling that today is an appointed time for somebody. I don't know any of y'all. I'm going to assume you're all saved, but if you're not, do not leave this service without coming and getting prayed for. Rick will pray for you. Paul and Meredith will pray for you. I'll pray for you. Anybody that's serving Christ will pray with you. I'm not going to embarrass anybody. I'm not going to ask you to come up. I'm not going to do any of that stuff. If you want to come into me after service, that's great. But I'm telling you today, if you are not saved, today is the day of salvation. Do not leave here. I'm pleading with you. Do not leave here without getting prayed for. Amen. Do not leave here without Christ in your hip pocket, as it were. Because you need somebody to help you fight the daily battles. I need somebody to help me along the road. Because I stumble. I trip. Amen. I need Christ daily. I need to read daily. We need to study God's word. We need to pray, and none of us pray enough. We need to seek his face so that when the ugly times come, 
when the darkness falls around us, there is that light shining that we can look at it and draw strength and draw hope. Amen? Amen. Bow your heads with me. Father God, I thank you for giving me what you wanted me to say today. I just ask that it touch each and every heart here. If there be one here that is not saved, let today be the appointed time. I'm not going to embarrass anybody. Just ask, dear Lord, that if you touch somebody's heart, if someone needs prayer today, come up and talk to us. But I ask that you touch each and every life, whether somebody's struggling financially, struggling emotionally, lost loved ones, financial problems, whatever the situation might be, that you will take full control of that situation and give peace of mind and peace of heart. And in the blessed name of Christ, everyone said, Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Don't normally do this, but if you'd like to bless the ministry, we're going to buy some more tracks and things with it. I have some tracks up at the chaplain's tent if you want to get some, uh, just a few. But uh, I'm glad that you were here today. I hope that this meant something to you today. And again, if you need prayer, please come up and, and, and let us pray with you because we'd love to pray with you. And thank you so much. And everybody be safe and be careful going home. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Take yeah, take care of that. Yeah, take care of that. We don't. You can keep them if you want. I just, I just got my YouTube address and everything. I, if y'all go to YouTube and hit like, it just makes my chunky tuna heart go pitter patter.